Hallelujah. Shout on the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Praise God. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. You all sound great this morning. Amen. You sound wonderful. That's the power. That's God's power. Let's go ahead and pray before we get into the word this morning. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for blessing us, blessing us to be here this morning. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Praise God. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, look at your neighbor say, get your Bible out. All right. We all ready. Everybody's here and excited about the Lord. Um, and, you know, we welcome you watching us right now or whenever you watch this. I know a lot of people follow us and we just say, hey, you know, just listen in. Let let uh, God minister to you uh, through the word. And, you know, just so you guys know, we've we've been given this mandate from the Lord. And I that's why I believe in doing it. You know, I I, I believe in uh, taking advantage of every media outlet that we can, you know, at this time, you know, of, of course, there's television, there's greater things, but, you know, that's greater finances. And so we'll have that at, at end time as well. But Amen. we are really doing a lot right now. We got uh, our Facebook, we got YouTube. These guys are live. They can go on there live, um, but it stays up. So a person can hear. I mean, I've gotten people commenting testimonies. They've been helped by stuff and you know just I mean like man all over the place you know um, China was uh, in there recently you know just uh, people listening to our stuff in China so I mean that's you know that's not even easy to do but they showed up on the map so they did it so they might you know however they got in there they did it so uh, we, we want to take advantage of all of this so just keep praying say you know we want to openly publish Matter of fact, I'll give you guys a scripture so you know why we do this and why do we have to have this media team? Some people say, um, you know, it's, well, this, we're fine. It's just us. We don't need to have all that stuff. Well, we do because we want to touch the world. We don't want it to just stay here. And so um, let me see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the scripture that I stand on for this. And that way we, we continue to do it. Um, and so we're supposed to go. We know the, the Mark 16, 15. We're supposed to go out there uh, and, and spread the good news. But Mark 16, 15 in the Amplified. I'll just read this and then you'll know why we do this. Why do we have, why are we on social media? Why do we have cameras? Why do we do all the stuff that we do? Well, he says, and he said unto them, go into all the world and preach and publish. And so that's what we're doing. We're publishing it. And so when you, you put stuff out there, you're publishing it. You're putting it out there so that the world can now come back and look at it. Preach and publish openly the good news of the gospel to every creature of the, of the whole human race. So, so how many know you can't physically go every place, right. no matter who you are, but you can publish it, right? Amen. Amen. And so we've been able to touch lives in Australia and places that, you know, maybe we'll go there one day, but... We, we're not there right now, and they can benefit from the same thing that's happening here for you. Amen? Amen. So praise God. So keep all of that in, in prayer. Keep our media ministry in prayer and all that stuff, and appreciate what these guys do because it's a, it's a great work. It's a lot that goes into it. It's not as easy as we think, and so just be thankful for that. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, um, we already prayed, so let's, let's get into the Word. We've got some, some powerful things going on, and God's been really just ministering to us during this time on these Sundays here. And uh, we've been preaching a series here for Sundays entitled The Works of Jesus. The Works of Jesus. We're going to preach The Works of Jesus, Part 4. Amen? The Works of Jesus, Part 4. Y'all ready? Amen. Did I forget anything? Okay, we good. Praise God. Amen. Okay, so the works of Jesus part four and the subtitle of this morning's message is the miracle of salvation, the miracle of salvation. And so we think about all the great things that God has done, that Jesus has done. You know, we talked about the power to deliver last week. You know, he's 
come to set the captives free. Um, we've talked about evidence, you know, having evidence and there's a change. There's a notice change in your life after Jesus comes and all that kind of stuff. We talked about healing hands, right? Y'all remember these things? You know, we're preaching part four, healing hands where, you know, God laid hands on them and healed everybody. And so we know he's done some, some great things, but I believe the greatest of all miracles is the miracle of salvation. I believe that's the greatest of all miracles, uh, the greatest work ever done. You know, it's, it's reuniting sinful man with the holy God. Reuniting sinful man with the holy God. Let's go to John 3.16. John 3.16, we'll look at it in the King James. It's a very familiar scripture, but let's just continue to get greater revelation and, and uh, grow at the, at the rate that God has for us. So um, John 3.16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, this word perish is important for us to notice uh, and, and to know what it means. It doesn't mean that you just, um, you know, you didn't get God and, and so you don't have a happy life. No, there's a time coming where people are going to be judged. I mean, they will be eternally cut off from God forever. Amen. Y'all with me? Um, that's something that you don't want to happen to you. Amen. And so we've been given a chance to receive God. Now there's, there are things that's going to happen. You know, I've, I've been reading in revelations, man, and that, you know, you want some, you, you got enough courage. You get in there, man, you got to pray, but you start reading some stuff and you say, wow, you know, it seems like today we spend so much time trying to woo and negotiate and almost beg people, right? Come on. Y'all got you understand that almost beg people to come to church and to participate in the things of God and to, but you know what? God is a just God, but God is not planning. And there is a tremendous amount of wrath that is coming. I mean, this wrath is unimaginable. I mean, it's like, what? I mean, like, it's not just, it's like, when you start to reading stuff about, you know, locusts coming out of the bottomless pit, just coming out, first the smoke comes before they come. I'm not trying to scare you, but, you know, it is Halloween, so let's see, make sure we focus on the right thing, you know. Uh, they, 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 it's not Halloween today, but, you know, it's this month. But So the smoke coming up out the, the pit, that's open, and this black smoke is coming, but then these locusts that are released, now you think about locusts, you might not think of them having bodies as horses and face like men and teeth like lions and tails like a scorpion's tail. You might not be thinking of that kind of locust. Amen. That is released, but then given an assignment to torment man for five months to torment man. So what does that mean? It says that. And I, I wasn't even planning on getting to this, but it's in Revelation. You can look it up. But it says that death will run from people who want it. So what does that mean? They cannot die. So imagine being, and, and these locusts are given an assignment to torment man. Amen. So some people don't want to hear that. I don't really either, but... What I'm going to do is choose Jesus because those things are going to happen. Like I can't go to God and say, God, don't have that. No, no. I, I think that's not right. No, no. They're going to happen. Amen. But we've been, that's why I say that the greatest miracle of all miracles is the miracle of salvation because sinful man gets the opportunity to be reunited with the Holy God. We get an opportunity to miss all these things coming and instead of, um, you know, us being a people, that's why I say we all not be begging. You know, people come in looking for what are you going to do for me? That, that's the age we're in. What is the church going to do for me now? What does the church have to offer me next? I, oh, I'm going to go to the next church because, you know, I like what they give over there. That, <laughs> those things are not really important. What's really important is that you get the truth in a way, and that you realize that, you know what, I am not going to miss 
heaven, but I'm, I'm definitely not about to be up in here getting tormented. I'm definitely not going to have some locusts flying around. I was going to find that, but I, I, maybe I shouldn't because uh, um, it's in here somewhere. But I was reading that in my other study Bible, but I'm like, Lord, oh, I'm glad I'm with you, Jesus. Because, you know, you will reestablish and reconfirm your walk with God when you start reading stuff like that. Amen. Amen. When, when you start hearing stuff like that, you'll go ahead and say, you know what? Let me go ahead and make sure my relationship with Jesus is legit. Let me make sure that I don't have anything in me that is creating a division between me and my God and that I am not taking any of this for granted. Amen. Praise God. Well, I don't want to. Y'all know what that is? Nine. Okay. I'm looking and I'm saying, I know it, but see, I have my other study Bible. I'm highlighting stuff, but this is my preaching Bible. So you don't be preaching about revelations because people just, they go away and they go hide in the closet somewhere. I just can't take it, pastor. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Is it happening today? <laughs> I'm telling you, you got a way out of this, man. Let, let, now, I'm preaching on the miracle of salvation, and I was not planning on doing this, but y'all said Revelations 9? 9. Okay, let me see. Let me Because I was looking at it in the King James 2. In the King, okay, yeah, let me just read this. Now, now, I'm reading this not to, like, yeah, I'm reading this to wake you up. <laughs> I'm reading this to anybody who's watching me say, I am not about to be caught up in that. Now you living on the side where you can just choose Jesus and miss all of this. And so he says, Revelations 9, 3, and there came out of the smoke. So that smoke came from the bottomless pit. Well, let me just say, uh, let me just say verse two. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. We've had fires. We've had all kinds of stuff that create a lot of, but imagine this. That's another level, right? And he says, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And upon them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And so this is all prophetically speaking, but you know, there'll be a time where, see, if you miss the rapture, you're going to have to make a choice. If you don't choose God, you either take the mark of God or the mark of the beast. And so this, this mark is something that you can't hide. You, you, God going to know you're marked by him. Or you can be marked by the devil. Amen. And but you're gonna have to get one of those marks. And so those that don't have the mark of God, they have these locusts who are assigned to attack and torment them. Would would y'all say that? Dang. Now, how do I avoid that? I gotta receive Jesus now. Yeah, I I because see, we don't know when boom, things gonna change on us. You know what I mean? And so we've got to receive it. And to and he says. Verse five, and to them, it was given them that they should not kill them, but that they should torment, they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. You ever seen, you know, if you look it up, when a scorpion stings, that is a terrible situation that that person is in. And, and in those days shall men seek death. And shall not find it. So people in today's time say, I'm, you know, I'm feeling I'm just going to commit suicide. Well, in this time, you can't. You're going to want to. Now, if you're watching me, don't, you know, committing suicide is not an escape. That's you, you. People who do that, they wake up and they realize, what have I done? You have not escaped anything. You've just ushered yourself into eternal separation from God. And so we don't want to try to take those escapes. In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces 
were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of a woman and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Is that enough for you to say, I'm getting saved? That, that's it, man. I'm getting saved. Amen. Come on. Some of y'all got family members that's playing with this. They say, I don't need God. Just read that to them. How do you think about it? What is that? How does that make you feel <laughs> when you're faced with something like that? Amen. And so, um, you know, this is, you know, their wings, the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots as of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions and there were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months. So let's just stop right there. So that's pretty serious. Now, where did I just read that from? Revelation. But what, where's Revelations? Bible. It's in the Bible. What is the Bible? The word of God. And it's true, right? And so we can't believe everything else. We can't believe that, oh, you know what? I'm blessed and highly favored. And, you know, God's commanded the blessing to be upon me and not believe this. Because guess what? It's in the same book. It's in the same book. But now we can rejoice. And so now you understand that how, back to John 3, 16, how much of a miracle this is. That man could be taken from his sinful ways and being forever cut off from God and then now be united with God in Jesus and not have to worry about no locusts, all that shit. I'm not afraid of that because I won't be affected by any of it. Why? Because I've just made a simple decision. And so this is truly a miracle where you can transfer kingdoms just by believing. Did you know that you can pray for a satanic worshiper and lay hands on them? They believe and receive with their heart, repent of their ways, and they get transferred kingdoms. So they just step out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God, just like that. And it doesn't matter what they've done. They are forgiven. Is that y'all think that that's a miracle? I mean, that is a miraculous happening. I mean, that is very powerful. It's truly a miracle. Go to Colossians now. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Um, and so I believe, just to paraphrase some of this so that you, you don't get, you know, don't worry. But I believe that if you accept Jesus now, then your life gets better. And you have good things to look forward to instead of bad. Amen. Does that make sense? I don't believe that we have to look forward to all these crazy things. I believe that if we choose Jesus now, then we can be caught up. Amen. We can be caught up with him. You know, it's the rapture of the church and Thessalonians. It talks about that. Um, but we can experience a better life. So even let me just say it this way. A person can receive Jesus. And if they die, they don't have to go to hell. They don't know when they're going to die, but they know they're alive today. And so they got to take advantage of today so they can receive Jesus today. And if they happen to pass on, it's all good for them. You don't have to worry about any loved ones that have passed on in Jesus. It's all good. They don't have anything to worry about. But so that's that. And then the other thing is we don't know when. It's all going to happen. We don't know when the rapture of the church is going to happen, where God is going to boom, call up his saints. He does. We don't know. Right. Y'all with me? OK, I just feel an anointing. I got to just teach off script today. Let's go. To, let me find the next one. We'll come back to Colossians, but I got to make sure that you. Uh, man, you ought to be having some excitement about the fact that you get to participate in this stuff and stop thinking about what the church got to offer you. And uh, when I, you know, I go to the other one because they got, they let me come late. They, they give me coffee and donuts and all this stuff. They, they, you know, I'm not, I don't need all of that. I need the truth, man. See what I'm saying? I mean, oh, and I don't, listen, another thing I've been studying, even talking to, you know, some pastors and stuff, but it's like, when did the church go dark? If you, if you go look at videos now, the church is a concert. Can't nobody read their Bible. They don't bring these to church no more. If they did, they can't see it. 
You go up in there, man, and the lights is it's jumping off like a concert. It's, it's like, whoa. So who's reading their Bible? Nobody. But what? Their flesh? Amen? Because, you know, it's not as uh, appealing to the flesh to sit down with these bright lights on you and all that stuff. It's, it's a little bit better because, you know, you could, I mean, man, lights on you, man. You get sleepy and fall asleep. Everybody saw that. Some of y'all end up on camera. Like, dang. You know what I'm saying? But those, the other things that, like, are offered to people are really not important. Because if, if, if they're not prepared, you know what we do in church is we prepare you for your end. We prepare you to live for God with the time that you have. And then we make sure that you're prepared so that you don't miss anything. When God is coming, you don't miss it. Amen? Amen. And so that's, that's what church is all about. Okay. And so 1 Thessalonians, we're just teaching off script for a minute because I had to make sure y'all get this. Uh, you know, truth is what's going to help you the most. Amen? And so uh, let me just read. Uh, let's see. Okay. So 1 Thessalonians 4.13. I'll start there and then read down a little bit. In the King James. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. So that means to have passed on. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Right? So if somebody has passed on and they got Jesus. I've, I've said this at funerals that we are to shift our focus. Let's not focus on our loss, but focus on their gain. What they've done is they have made it. They have finished their race. We that are still alive are still running our race. Amen. But it's no time. Of course, you're going to miss that person. But if they are in now, if they're not in Jesus, then of course, you know, ah, that's a tough one to deal with. But if they're in Jesus, you can realize that, you know what? I'm going I'm re- I'm to start, I'm going to change my sorrow. I'm going to turn it in and I'm going to start rejoicing for them because they, man, they're, they made it. They finished this race. And so I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, which have passed on, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep, which have died in Christ, will God bring forth. So they're going to come forth with power. He says, for this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So you can't affect them. This is another scripture for you to note that the state that they died in is the state that they stay in. So um, just an announcement. Purgatory is non-existent. That's not a real place. Anybody ever told you that? That's not real. You cannot pray anybody out of the situation they're in. The time to make it right with God is now. There is people, there's a lot of religions that believe this. They believe that there's uh they even, some of them have what's called a baptism of the dead and all that kind of stuff that don't do it. You're going to have to choose with the free will you have receive Jesus. Now Amen. today is, is your day because when you leave this earth the state you in, you stay in there. Amen. And so you can't mess up somebody's salvation either. Amen. So you can't get them in there, but you can't mess it up either. That's what he's saying. If they died, in Christ, and they, you can't stop them. And so, um, verse 15, for this I say, I'll read it again, for this I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that they which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord, now look at this, you want to partake in this right here. Either you die and you, you are in Jesus and you're right. And so we know Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed unto a man wants to die and then judgment. So what does that mean? I'm living my life my days are over. I don't, I don't just get to go into whatever. I don't get to come back as a bird and I'm none of that. I'm going to have to be judged. Amen. I'm going to have to be judged for the way I live my life. Not what I meant to do, but what I did. Amen. And so Hebrews 9, 27 is appointed unto men once to die and then judgment. So what does that mean? The state you died in, the state you stay in. Amen? Y'all with me? Okay, so now, if 
I don't die the physical death before this next thing happens, I surely don't want to miss it. Because you would be so upset if this next thing I'm going to read you happened and you saw it without partaking. Y'all with me? There was a video that I saw some years back where a man was preaching. He was bringing the word. He was bringing it, bringing it, bringing it. He was holding his Bible. He was bringing it. There was people in the, in the church and some was paying attention. Some were not. You know, some were whatever, thinking about other stuff. He was bringing it, bringing it, bringing it. Then all of a sudden, boom, loud sound came. It was his Bible hitting the floor. He was gone. People in the church, many were gone, but there were those that were left and they were weeping uncontrollably because they knew what happened. They were in church and missed the rapture because their hearts were not right with God. And so what happened? They got left behind. I mean, and, and they were in the aisles, man. They were just crying and like, oh, no, it happened. Amen. Now, if we knew it was going to happen on whatever day it was going to happen, then none of us would miss it. But since we don't know. See what I'm saying? All right. So verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Now. He's not the baby in the manger no more, church. This ain't, this ain't the baby in the, this ain't the Christmas story. Mm -mm, not right here. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And so guess what? Those who pass on, they're in the presence of God, but there's going to be a physical resurrection. Oh, come on, somebody. They coming up out the graves. That's why you don't have to worry about it. It don't matter if they cremated. It don't matter. This is supernatural. They coming up out and they're going to be in their glorified state. Wow. Woo. I'm excited about that. Boy, that thing is powerful. Somebody may have uh, been taken out by a disease or or maybe they, you know, their, their body, whatever. So your vision of them was different. But when, <laughs> woo, boy, when they come back now, bam, every, they, they're going to be looking good. Everything's going to be in place. It's going to be the best that it ever was. Amen. Now we have Jesus as this example, right? They crucified him. But what happened on the third day? He rose again. Did he now he had to have the wounds and stuff like that just for people to believe. But he was in his glorified state. They said before he was crucified, they beat him up so bad that his face was unrecognizable. It was unrecognizable. But yet when he. Come on, somebody. When he rose in power, come on, all the effects and all the, the stuff, all the junk of life had to fall off because he was back and he was back in his glorified state. And that's what we can look forward to. So if a person has passed on in Christ, praise God, we'll shout and celebrate because we know that when that trumpet sounds, boom, they getting up before me. Imagine this scene. They get up and then he says, uh, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Y'all is it? I am not making this up. I am reading this out of the Bible, out of the King James version. Nothing is embellished. It is the simple truth. How would you like to be walking around living your life? But you decided I'm going to stay with Jesus. Doesn't matter how tough it gets. Oh, yeah, I'm still with Jesus. Still with Jesus. I'm just walking around. And then boom. Whew. Just like that. You caught up. Clothes dropped to the ground. You're gone. But what happens for you? The experience you get to experience. And you there go your people. Come on, somebody. Anybody, anybody with me? Come on. There, there go your people. There. Oh, man, that's my grandma. That's my grandpa. Whoa. And they're not in the state that you saw them last. They're not old and maybe they're, you know, no, no, they're in power. They're looking the best they've ever looked. And now you're meeting them. And then there's Jesus standing in all of his fullness of his power. 
I mean, just floating. <laughs> but we want to rock wall that church. We want, I don't know, Pastor, I, you know, because, uh, you know, well, I mean, you know, because, you know, when football season starts, I mean, I just, you know, because sometimes the schedule, church schedule, my games don't really work out. You got people just arguing the wrong things. You know, trying to argue with you. Well, and, and, uh, it's okay for me to still do this and that. I mean, I'm still, God knows my heart. I'm past that. I'm looking forward to this. I don't want to be like, I don't, if it's questionable, I don't want nothing to do with it. If there's any question at all, I don't want to be in there at all. I want to be on the right side with God all the time. I don't want no great, I don't need what to, Amen. Because you get caught up like this and he says, we'll be caught up. We'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So guess what? I don't have to worry about the locusts. With the horse bodies and all that, the lion teeth, they're not going to bother me. Amen. How many of y'all would be willing to miss this? How many of you would be willing to chance it? Because here's the thing. When this happens, you know what happens when the church goes. Y'all know? You are the temple of the living God. So guess what? His spirit, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, dwells in you. So you think that evil is bad now. How many of y'all would say, it's gotten pretty bad. But the Holy Ghost is still here. And so it's only allowed to go so far. Why? Because we're praying. I mean, the devil can only get so wicked around here because we in here praying. What happens when we're gone? Oh, the Holy Ghost is gone too. But you know who's left? Those who are playing church. They still here though. They was playing church. But now they have no more help. Now it's about to get ugly. It's about to get real bad. Amen. And so now let's go to Colossians. I just had to share that because you ought to be excited. Say, you know what, man? I'm excited that I chose Jesus. Man, I'm excited that God gave me a chance. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to die in my sin. I don't know about you guys, but I've been, boy, afforded an abundant amount of grace and mercy in my days. And I didn't have to wake up without God. I got to choose him now. That's why I preach with this kind of passion. That's why, you know, I say, hey, man, you know, we got to take the things of God serious because I see the devil lulling God's people to sleep and people don't prioritize. And, you know, we were talking about it in our prayer group yesterday, but it's like any, everything, you know, the things of God get bumped so quickly. Schedules change. I don't feel like going, I don't. OK, well, just think about this stuff. I will not miss this. And I'm going to be excited and stay excited that God's giving me a chance. Just by believing, I can transfer kingdoms. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Um, Colossians chapter 1. And then let's look here at verse uh, 12. So he says here, giving thanks to the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And so now we can give thanks to God. And he has... Verse 13, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. This is powerful, man. I've been translated into the kingdom of God just by believing in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Let's look at this in the message translation. Yeah, message translation. Thanking the father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. So he's making us strong enough. So what does this mean? He's going to keep you. So some people say, you know what? It's hard to live for God. Well, how many know God will keep you? If you want to be kept, he'll keep you. Amen. He ain't going to let you run away. You know, now if you just blatantly choose to, that's on you. But he's helping you and he will keep you. And so you ought to be thankful because he makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. Next verse. God rescued us 
from dead end alleys and dark dungeons. He set us up in the kingdom of the son of uh, uh, that he loved so much. Next verse. The son who got us out of the pit we were in, got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. Sins that you are doomed to keep repeating. See, that's the people that cannot seem to stop. They just keep doing the same stuff. But Jesus got us out of that. And so, yeah, I know you can't uh, stop it, but in me, you can. And this is how people can uh, be delivered. You know, there's so many testimonies. I know even pastors that this has happened. They should be, before they became pastors, they were uh, hooked on cocaine and all that. And they got delivered in one day. One day. Never went back. Amen. So God's power is there. God can keep you out of sin. He can keep you from messing up. But, you know, what we need to be uh, constantly mindful of, especially in these times, is we need to be mindful of the condition of man without Christ. We need to recognize that. You know what I mean? We need to recognize that the condition of man without Christ. Man was born into sin. So what does that mean? Born to be separated from God. That, that's messed up, right? And so let's go to Romans, Romans 5. Romans 5. So I don't have to be separated from God no more. I don't have to be doomed to keep doing the same stuff I used to do. I don't have to do that. I, I could be free. Y'all with me? Uh, you know, you don't have to talk like you used to talk. Uh, God will just give you a new language. You know, you, you don't use those words. Come on, cuss words and all that stuff. that used to come out in frustration. You know, that doesn't have to happen to you anymore. God is coming along, delivering people, helping them, touching them. Not only do we get to miss those bad things coming, but we get to celebrate and rejoice and live a better life right now. I don't know about you, but my life is much better with Jesus. My life right now that I have today, I would not trade it in. I would not. For one second, go back to my old ways. I would not even risk what I have with God. Amen? Because it's much better on this side. But now we need to recognize, once again, the condition of man without Christ. Because a lot of people, they don't realize the condition that they're in. And so, it's hard to get somebody saved if they don't know they're lost. You, you with me? If they don't know they're lost, then it's very hard to get them, to help them. Because in their minds, they're fine. Most of the time, they haven't read the book. But we have, and so we can be excited about it. Now, uh, Romans chapter 5, let's look at verse 12. And I'll just read down to 19 in the King James. This is truly a miracle right here. It says, uh, wherefore, yeah, wherefore, as by one man, Sin entered into the world and death by sin. So and so death passed upon all men for that all have sin. OK, so I now keep reading. I'll, well, let me just read the next verse and I'll explain it for until for until the law sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed where there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Uh, who is the figure of him that was to come? So let me just stop right there. What does this mean? Born, you're born into sin. So death was reigning. And so the wages of sin is death. And so people were born into sin. Have you ever noticed how kids just pick up sin naturally? A, a child, a baby. How does a, what's a baby talking about? Mine. Mine. <laughs> what about sharing and love and all? They don't, uh, that ain't natural. Amen. You know, get some kids around each other, man. They get territorial, you know, getting pushing on each other. You know, some kids be biting each other. Where did they learn that at? They're just biting folks. <laughs> but that's because, they see, born into sin. This because, let me tell you something. This because you're saved doesn't mean that your kids are going to be born into salvation. 
Now, there's a grace afforded unto them, and there's something called the age of the sermon where God gives them a pass. They don't, you know, they don't necessarily know the difference between right and wrong, but I'm just, in my assessment of it, I'm just wondering, like, wow, Lord, they seem to do the wrong things naturally. And they have to learn how to do the right things, but no, they didn't have to learn to do the wrong things. They just did it. Well, that's this nature. That's this nature because of Adam. And so he says here, everybody, even though they didn't commit the same sin, they're under it. But verse 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many became dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And so what is this saying? Sin came on you without you wanting it. But now if you receive it, you can receive righteousness. You can receive a new life. You can transfer kingdoms. I don't have to be subject to uh, this sinful way. And these sin I, don't, I can just live a new way. And the things of God can come natural to me. More natural. And verse 16, and not as it were by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. So what does that mean? No matter what you did, you're justified in Christ. Anybody, any level of sin, you can just add it up. As long as you just don't blaspheme him and just say, I don't want him. But anybody can be forgiven and anybody is justified if they want to be the, the justified and they want to receive this. Verse 17, for if by one man's offense, death reigned, by one, much more than they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification for life, of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Y'all get that? So Adam messed up. It was one man that messed up. So many were what? Made sinners. So when you're made a sinner, you just do it, even if you don't want to. But he says here, so by the obedience of one shall many be what? No, but what else does it say before that? So what happens if you're made righteous? Well, you do righteous stuff without even trying. Oh, come on. Y'all here with me? You, you, you do stuff without even trying. Come on. You make the good decision. You make the right decision. You live ethically. Come on. You live above board just because that's what you do. That's your new way. I mean, you don't try. I'm not trying to do this. I'm not trying not to cuss people out. Y'all with me? I just don't do it. It's not because I received something else. I had one nature. Then I traded that one in, come on y'all, and got this other nature, which is far better. And this is something that God blesses us to be able to participate in. This is truly a miracle. In fact, this is love in action. Now let's go up to Romans 5, 8. This is love in action. Let's look at it in the NIV. Love in action, man, I'm telling you. Romans uh, 5, 8 in the NIV. So he says, he's, he's talking about the fact that, that God demonstrates this love, right? He demonstrates it because, you know, it's one thing to be rewarded when you deserve it. But he blessed us even that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. He demonstrated his love for us. So, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that a miracle? You didn't deserve it, but it did it anyway. And he gave you an opportunity to step out of what was holding you and keeping you bound to step into something great. Now, he has the power to save, but also the power to keep. And so I, I firmly believe this. That's why you guys don't hear me preaching about backsliding all the time and talking about that. And I don't really believe in it. I just, you know, I think it's a choice. You're going you're gonna to be with him or not. Amen. This is, that's your choice. I mean, I can't keep preaching to you about 
uh, uh, well, you know, he's a backslidden Christian. No, you know what a backslidden Christian is? A sinner. Ain't no backslidden. Who made up this stuff? Amen. I mean, uh, Hebrews 10, 30, 38 or somewhere in there. He says, you know, we're to hold fast. But he says, we're not of those who fall back unto perdition. So that means that's not us. We're not the ones that fall back unto sin. We're the ones who believe to the end. So if people are going around saying, you know, I'm just a backslidden Christian. No, you just stepped away from God. You better get back in here before the trumpet sounds. Because if somebody tells you you're a backslidden Christian, well, you leave that Christian on the end, that infers that you're still saved and you're still going to be all right. I'm not the one to play games with that. There's arguments. There's all kinds of stuff. I don't argue with nobody. I just choose to believe the truth. I believe that if I'm going to be with God, I'm going to just make sure that ain't no mistake. Because another thing he says in that revelations, man, there's going to come a time where he's just going to say, let the sinners be the sinners and the righteous be the righteous. So that's going to that's going to take all your time of trying to play games with people, begging them. No, 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 no. Y'all with me? Now, would you rather be what? See, y'all would love me if all this stuff I'm preaching happened tonight. You'd be like, "Woo! glad I went to church. <laughs> yeah. It happened tonight. You know, you know who would be upset? The ones at the concert. They're going to be mad. They're going to be mad because they went to church and they got entertained and they got a concert and they had a caramel macchiato. Got to have it in service and everything. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be mad. Huh? Because there ain't going to be enough uh, stage presence to, to hide you from what's coming. Ain't going to be enough entertainment to numb you anymore. Amen? It's just going to be rude and aggressive. So, I'm going to just keep preaching like this. To me, it doesn't matter how many people I have. I'm going to keep preaching like this. Because this right here is, I've been called to be a truth bearer. I've been called to stir you up. If you're not living right, then... I, I've been called a lot of lot of fire. Hopefully something gets underneath you to where you say, okay, I'm about to get this right. Because you're never going to hear me up in here reading from my own book. I might be blessed to write books, but I ain't going to be reading them from here. I'm going to read this book. And it's the same book that you got access to. And so anything I read in here, now you can't say, I don't know if I believe that. Well, you said you believe the Bible. I can't convince people to believe the Bible, but I can sure make sure that I am a person that teaches it. Uh, so God has that power to save and the power to keep. Go to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter four. Hebrews chapter four. Hebrews chapter four, and let's look here in verse 14. Okay, so Jesus has done all of this. So verse 14, he says here, um, yeah, let me look at an NIV they got there. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Hold firmly to it. Next verse. For we do not have... Uh, a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness. Let me stop right there. He knows the struggles you go through. He knows everything that you deal with, every temptation you face, every doubt, every worry, everything that comes in your mind. Uh, sometimes you might feel like, oh man, they just don't understand me, but he does. He does and he will help you. But see, you've got to go to him and stop going to them. Come on, somebody. You can't keep going to them and getting because they empathize with you. Go to him now because they may hear your complaints, but they don't have the power to help you change. 
They don't have the power to change your situation, but he does. If he empathizes with me, then he knows the struggle that I'm facing. But guess what? He wants me going to him. And now he says here that he is able, he's our high priest, that's, he's able to empathize with our weakness, but we have one. So we don't have a high priest that can't empathize. So that means he, he has no idea what you're dealing with. He knows everything about it. But we have one who has been tempted in every way. So every time you've been tempted, come on, any of y'all been tempted in any area? Come on, you've been tempted with your anger. You've been tempted with uh, your faith and continuing to believe. You've been tempted with keeping your hope. Jesus felt all of that. Every single temptation, he felt it. But the difference is, he says, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Now, let me help you understand. I've been teaching this for a long time. Temptation is not sin. It's yielding to temptation that makes it sin. And so Jesus was tempted just like you. But the difference is he didn't yield to it. So now if he's in you, you don't have to yield to it. Amen. And so don't ever allow these situations to pull you away uh, from him. And so he did not yield to that sin. He's able to. To help us. He knows everything we go through, yet he is able to help us. Now get this. He's able to help all of us at the same time. Amen. What? Amen. Yeah, you could be over there at your house going through it, having a tough time. And you know what? Somebody down the street can have a tough time too, and God can show up and help you both at the same time. Amen. And he knows what you need at your house, and he knows what you need at your house. And he'll deliver it at the same time. Wow. Just like that. You can be lifted up from your problem. Is this powerful or what? Yes. I mean, come on. Now, you already know the world can't offer you that same kind of help. Amen. They can't, they can't help you both at the same time. But God can and God will. Yet he's able to help us at the same time. And now he has such a desire for us to receive this salvation. He doesn't want anybody to perish. Amen. Now, let me help you with this. We are to have a passion for souls. We want people to be saved, but we're not supposed to introduce them into a counterfeit gospel. Amen. That's the wrong approach. If you got a passion for souls, tell them the truth. Don't have a passion. Well, I want to get a man pastor. So, you know, um, you know, cause some of y'all invite people to church and you hoping that I'm not preaching one of these messages. You up and say, I hope pastor preaching like on some prosperity or something, just some, you know, because, man, I'll be inviting people, man, and, you know, they be going away, feathers all ruffled, and you're like, dang, pastor, I'm trying to help you grow the church. I don't need that kind of help. Uh-uh, if they don't want the truth, don't send them over here. I mean, you're just wasting their time. Hey, Amen. You know what the Holy Ghost is going to do. I told you guys, I didn't plan on going. You think I was trying to get up in here preaching about some uh, locusts looking like horses and stuff? That did not come up in my notes. I'm like, no. Nah. But, but I'm under the orders of the Holy Ghost. So beware of this. Have a passion for souls, but have a passion for truth. Don't try to sneak them in. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to, you got your loved ones or the people you ministering to decide, don't sneak them in. Don't say, well, dad, just, just come in here and you know, no, nah, hey, you're going to have to cut that out. Yeah. Huh? What do you mean? Yeah. God is not pleased. Oh, well, man, that just seems so abrupt and so aggressive. So is the rapture. It's abrupt and it's abrupt and it's aggressive. You know what? Those locusts are pretty aggressive too. Just going around, just equal opportunity torment. Flying around, just uh, stinging folks. Yeah. <laughs> Random, just people just thinking, I'm a. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's hurt so bad, I'm, just, I'm gonna die. And then they do this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you still here, man? Y'all with me? Let's miss this. Y'all with me? See, I have to, you know, that's why pastors operate under somewhat of a prophetic anointing because we're preaching ahead. And so, like, I'm preaching stuff that will be appreciated later. But sometimes people don't see it right now. They don't see, like, how valuable it is to get this kind of truth. 
but they'll see it later. So that's why, you know, we've got to do it boldly because right now uh, people would prefer us to, you know, water it down and go along this other way. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and allow people, you know, to stay where they are. But I'm not the one that's called to do that. Now, I know God wants everybody to be saved, but not everybody will. But God does have that heart. Go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter 9. I mean, second, yeah, 2 Peter 3, actually. We'll come to a close on this, but I got to just, I got to preach the truth, man. We we'll have, you know, we'll have a good time at this church. You know, we got good praise and worship and good meet and greet and all that, but we always going to have the Bible. We're never going to run out of time to teach the Bible. I mean, that's just, you know, <laughs> praise God. And here it is. Second Corinthians, I mean, excuse me, second Peter three, nine and 10. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us. So that's like extraordinarily patient towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? Repentance. repentance. So nobody has to perish, but his desire is that all would come to repentance. Now, why is this important? Why is it important for people to do it now? Next verse. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away and with a great noise and with, and the elements shall melt and all this stuff is happening with fervent heat and the, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So these, all these things are coming. And so we don't know when all this is going to start. Somebody can argue. There's so many debates. Or, oh, well, I believe in, uh, you know, uh, post-tribulation or pre and all they could do all this stuff that the bottom line is you got right now and you need to get your life right with God right now so that therefore there's no question on what side of all of this you're on amen I believe I'm gonna be caught up and I don't believe I'm gonna have to see you know all the locusts and then people getting attacked I don't believe in that because I just I'm believing I'm rewarded for making a choice today but there are theologians that argued this that you know no we all gonna have to suffer this tribulation period and all that and then no i don't get in those arguments there's enough scripture to back up what i believe and what i teach and so i teach with a sense of urgency because i believe that we can escape all these things that are coming i believe that we don't have to be there with people dealing with this kind of you know terrible things. Amen. I'm excited about being caught up. Amen. And seeing my loved ones who passed on in the Lord. I'm excited about that. You know, I'm, I'm just excited. You know, it just, it just makes me think, man, it's like, wow. And you know what? You're going to see some people that you never even met. And that's going to be so powerful because they're going to be waiting on you because they were praying for you. I'm talking about generations. You don't know. See, somebody in your generation, you're, they've been praying for you. There was prayer meetings happening, talking about you. And you're going to be like, wow. Amen. Amen. So why would we miss that? Over what? The pleasure for a season? The ways of the world? Why would we miss that? Don't take any of this for granted, church. Anything that I preach here, this Bible, don't take it for granted. Make sure that you do what you're supposed to do with the time that God has given you. Last scripture, Romans 13. We'll read 13, verse 11 through 14 in the message. So now here it is. He says, but make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of of all of your day by day obligations. Doesn't that happen? Caught up in your schedule. I got this to do. I got that to do. And, and it seems like God is getting put on the back burner. But he says don't get caught up. And so absorbed and exhausted. And taking care of all of your day by day obligations. That you lose track of the time. And doze off. Oblivious to God. Next verse. The night is about over. This thing's about to happen, church. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches 
on the salvation work. He began when we first believed. I don't know if that's it. That might be it. And so, oh, no, no, there it is. We can't afford to waste a minute. Y'all with me? We can't afford to waste a minute. We must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence. In indulgence. So that's like these fr frivolous things that don't matter. That, you know, y'all with me? You ever got distracted? You trying to do something? You trying to work? Or maybe you get your phone and you planned on going to a Bible verse, but then you notice you got an email. You hit that email and that email takes you and now you all you forgot you was about to go to the Bible app. See, you got distracted by things that don't matter and then in sleeping around. So you got people sinning, man, they're, they're playing these games with the sin and not living clean for God and sleeping around and and dispensation and, and enjoying all this stuff, arguing and all this kind of stuff doing and, and then having this greed, one to just gain more and keep up with the Joneses and. You know, we got some the good Joneses over here, but hey, man, and you can't keep up with them if you try. They, man, they moving fast. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, but listen, y'all know what I'm talking about. Trying to do all these things that don't matter, but not prioritizing, not keeping God first. And then next verse. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourself in Christ and be up and about. Y'all see that? Because he's coming. So don't wait to the last minute to try to get it right. Amen. Don't wait. You know, uh, my daughter showed me a funny thing. It was on the Internet or something, but it was like a SpongeBob. And it says something about church. Church is at 10 o'clock. And it was like 955 and SpongeBob was laid out or something. You know what I mean? He, he said... Or he says something like, I'm going to get ready and I'm messing it up. But bottom line, he didn't prioritize. Amen. How many of us can be sometimes guilty of that? We didn't prioritize about the things of God. Well, you don't want to let this slip and boom, that day's on you. How many of y'all say, I'm ready and I'm going to stay ready? Well, anybody here, you say, I know I'm ready. Huh? Y'all with me? Come on. Anybody here say, I'm, I'm ready and I'm going to stay ready. This miracle, the greatest miracle ever known to mankind is the miracle of salvation, that you could step away from darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. God is good. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's just bow our heads before the Lord. Father God, we just love you and we honor you for who you are and who we are in you. I pray right now for uh, maybe anybody in here or maybe you're watching right now and you've heard this message. And maybe God has touched you in your heart and he, he's maybe reminded you that, you know, you're not right with him. This is not about you being condemned. This is about you taking advantage of an opportunity given unto you. Simply receive him. Simply say yes. He will come in and change your life. And you will get that opportunity to transfer kingdoms, to step out of darkness into his marvelous light. Church, let's repeat this prayer. And maybe you're at home just... Join in and say, you know, I want this. I'm, I'm not going to miss it this time. Let's repeat this prayer. Let's say it together so that anybody who hears this message will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus. Please, forgive me please forgive me for all of my sins. Of my sins. I commit my life, commit my life into, your hands. into your hands. This day, this day I, am saved. I am saved. Do with me, Do with me. As, you as you please and fill me, and fill me. with the power, the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand clap right there. Yeah. So what that means is just like that, there's a person who has been transferred. They could have been walking the wrong way. Just like that, they've been made right with Jesus.